Hanging out with the guys from Pissing Razors. What's up, guys? <laughs> Yo, <go on>. yeah. <laughs> wow, it's so good to have you guys here. Thank you guys for coming. Good to be here. Awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. So, if you guys want to introduce yourself, so kind of refresh everybody's memory on who you guys are, even though we see you guys around all the time. Remind ourselves who we are. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, vocals. And he's Matt Lynch, guitar. Eddie, drums. Gio, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think about, um, what are you guys going to bring up now that you guys have reunited and are totally doing everything? I, I think uh, uh, what we've been working on right now is just kind of getting our chops back together. Uh, you know, uh, chemistry's always there, but it's like, you know, I haven't really played drums seriously in a long time. And so for me, it's, it's like just kind of getting stamina and, you know, stuff that I used to be able to play the way it needs to be played. And, uh, and I think translates for kind of, kind of, these guys have been busy doing stuff, uh, you know, Gio's been busy, you know, doing his own thing, but uh, for me personally, it's, that's, it's more of that for me, and I, I think everybody else as well, in a certain way. So you guys excited <laughs> for this whole reunion? Well, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, the idea of, of getting back together and kind of uh, bringing back the feel of what we've done through the years, you know, it's a good opportunity for us to reconnect with fans and you know, the, uh, the fan base seems to, to still have that drive to hear the band and, you know, get the uh, energy back, you know, um, from what, it, from what we've, we've been uh, accustomed to through the years, so it's pretty exciting. So, how do you guys feel that you guys are going to be different? How different do you guys feel you are now than you were when you guys originally started? I, I mean, I think everybody's just wiser on, on, on everything. I mean, we're all older. It's been, you know, 13, 14 years since, you know, we played together as this lineup. You know, unfortunately, you know, uh, our bass player, Rick, uh, you know, he's a family guy now, and he's, he's moved on in, in that way, and then totally respectable. And, uh, but uh, as far as that goes, I mean, you know, everybody just is wiser. I mean, you know, Matt's a business guy. He goes, you know, you know, you know, law enforcement, and uh, I, I basically been doing the kind of kind of the same thing, uh, doing audio and, and just whatever I can do in music. You know, so every I think everybody's just more knowledgeable on what's going on business wise and the music business and anything that's going on in the band. And then musically, you know, um, I mean everybody grows as you go along. So uh, like I said, it's been a long time since we actually play together, so it, it's, it's going to be cool. I mean, Matt's already got a bunch of stuff written. I've had a ton of ideas that have just kind of been dormant for a long time, so I think we're going to have a really, really, really good record on our heads. How do you, um, Gio, you're the latest addition to Pissing yes, Racers. Sir. How's that? <laughs> you pulled to here. You, you caught me farting in the front of the I absolutely love it. I mean, I couldn't ask for more to play with these guys. I mean, we've been brothers for years to begin with. So, give me the opportunity to play with these guys. You know, I know Rick, all total respects, laid the foundation. I'm coming in as you know, the background for these guys to make sure it doesn't lose that, that power that it had, that it once had. So, I'm hoping I can come in 110% and make it sound exactly like it used to be. You know? Right. And it'd be the new venture, you know, but that hopefully it doesn't lose any of that feel. Oh, I'm sure I won't. I'm sure I won't. How's the chemistry between all of you guys? Little brothers hanging around? I totally <laughs> <know>. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh, it's pretty instant, you know. We sit in a room talking about this and that from back in the day or something that happened, you know. It's just, it's, it's, it's fun. That, that, that was the whole thing. I mean, you know, when we started back in the day, to me, it was not getting a guy in the band that's, uh, that, Say per se the most talented guy, but you're gonna have problems in with his personal. And uh, to me, it was like, dude, this. All right, this guy's not as good, but he's driven and he's, he. We get along good, and uh, as far as building that chemistry, that's what it was about. It's like let's work at it, and we we will get that good together. You know, not not as a uh, single person, as an individual. 
think it's about that, that chemistry. And that's what it's all about. I mean, that's the hardest thing to find, honestly. To, to put a, uh, to me, a successful band <coughs> is that. We have that chemistry, and we're playing, and we're creating music, and it's, you know, it feels good to the people we're playing with, first and foremost. And then I think that kind of translates onto, you know, fan base. I mean, everybody's gonna have problems. That's yeah. that's normal. I mean, if you didn't, that's just kind of weird. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in um, there's different type of sub genres in metal, and the one that I've been looking at the most and heard the most of that falls under Pissing Racers is uh, that you guys are described as groove metal. How do you guys dis Would you guys agree with that? That you that the music is groove metal. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, back in the day, we were you know when the band first came out and our record came out, you know, uh, there you know people that reviewed it, it's like, well, these guys sound like Sepultura, these guys sound like Fear Factor, these guys sound like Machine Head, these guys sound like Pantera, and some of all of them, the, some of our favorite bands, definitely big influences on all of us. So I never, you know. Some people took it as like, well, don't you guys find that offensive? Like, no, I think it's one of my favorite bands. Not that we're trying to sound like any of them, uh, but we're definitely in that genre. You know? So it's like, it, it's never, it's, uh, to me, it was flattering, to be quite honest with you. you know? I think in terms of like, yeah, in terms of like the music itself, I think a, a positive with the band is, is really focusing on the strong suits of a song or, a, or like, uh, something that translates well to uh, our listeners is, is where we don't focus on being the fastest or, or you know how many notes we can play, how many drum fills we can fit in. It's really about getting the interaction between your listener and your crowd and, and the songs that you're, you're uh, creating and stuff. I think we do great with, with that aspect of it. So. Yeah. We've always generated, like Matt said, we've always generated that energy automatically. But it was something that was never difficult for us to reproduce was once we got into the room, Eddie's always had a certain way of laying down that foundation. Mm -hmm. And when we had you know, his style of playing is that bluesy kind of riffage and stuff like that, that we and made kind of into that aggressive thing. And I never, at the beginning, never even sang in that style and manner, but it just kind of grew into that. And we found our own little niche. Rick being in the band was that last piece that we didn't have back then, and when he did come in, it was like wow, it was a, it was a solid, big chunk. It was a driving gig, you know, and and that's kind of what where we're at with with uh, with Gio. He's got that formula, that that feel of that thing now, and, and and it feels like it's the right time to to reproduce that again. We're 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 kind of funny in the room, I mean, because it's like. It's like we've already done it before, mm -hmm. but we've never really had together. We've done things amongst each other in the business, but we've never sat in the room. But when we did, it was on that. It was natural. Yeah, it was pretty natural. instantaneous. Was, that's a positive on, on on his behalf too. Like you know, shedding a positive light on him. He came in and gelled right away. I, I really didn't know what to expect. I've known Gio for years, and I've worked with him on various stuff, like Joe said. But you know, the idea of, of creating chemistry. Some people can never do it in their lifetime, and we we managed to uh, bring something together with a new new uh, component and really make it make it. And I think we've been blessed. I will tell you. Absolutely. Well, I didn't even know he he played bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding, man. I, I, I did it until I mentioned it. Oh shit! Now I gotta learn. <laughs> you know, like I said, yeah, that's a fact, though. That's that a is a fact. fact. Yeah, yeah, like, been blessed. The people that are related to that. <laughs> We've been blessed with the people that play in the band that you know that we've all been able to gel like that, and we've never missed a beat. You know, even when Matt left, and, and we had to continue on with him. Uh, without him, uh, and we brought in other people, you know, Caesar and whatnot, and uh, we still didn't miss a beat. So I think kind of we're in that same mode right now. What we've always focused on is is the the beat and the groove behind it. The songs too, so that that's a testament to Eddie's playing. Like it's always been, we focus on the uh, what what gets you moving within your soul, you know. And that's always within a, a drum beat or, or 
of that type of groove. That's why groove comes into play so heavily in terms of our description. You know? When you get the goose flesh. That's it. That's right. The goose flesh, right? <laughs> yes. What we used to say. That's, that's it. it. That's <laughs> not, not the goosebumps. The goose I got, goose buddy, I got the goose flesh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony on the bus driver. God, that guy. <laughs> get on the bus, gives us a freaking ball of Jim Bean. Awesome, I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least we behind that's not good. Thanks. So you guys all have different side projects that you all work on. How do you guys, do you guys sometimes just sit and compare and be like, well, not on who's better and who's worse, but as in, you know what, I do this type of, I feel like this when I play with this band, or I feel like that when I play with this other band. How do you guys compare yourselves to your other projects and this project? Well, I got nothing going on right now except for this. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, my, in, my case, in my case, it's a different instrument, so so it gives me a release on the other. See, so he part doesn't of play the bass. He was just gonna go drop it off or something. <laughs> that's like, oh, it. Yeah. That's why I went and pawned the bass. And <laughs> <laughs> I think the the key is is is. You know, you get different people involved and you kind of use the word feel. You're always going to get a different feel with different people, you know. Eddie, Joe, and myself, we had years and years of, of building, you know, uh, the feel that we had. I mean, it's not like when you hear something that you really like from the band, it was instantaneous. I mean, there was a period where we built into, you know, that vibe and that feel that we've had. And it's the same thing with other projects, you know, when Joe works on his stuff, he's dealing with different people. and it's it's really uh, kind of massaging ideas out of out of uh, your soul, you know, basically and stuff, you know, and it's different people, so it's never going to be the same. Okay, now that you, um, since you guys all have your side projects, is there any danger in the sense that your music for Pissing Racers is not going to be sounding like your other projects? In my opinion, I would say no. I believe that every project that everybody's doing is, you know, here and far between you know, different animals per se. Uh, on my end, it sounds somewhat, or even the stuff that I've done with Matt, the Six, and, and some other stuff, uh, very similar as far as vocal style. Uh, but no, I, I don't think so. Unless Matt. No, I totally agree. I, I think you know, it's the formula that we have here. I don't think uh, you know, really sound like anything else, you know. Even outside our projects, I think, you know, we don't sit there and um, focus on sounding like anybody or, you know, oh, hey, let's write a song that sounds like this band or that band. I think, you know, you just get, you get a, a vibe and a feel and you run with it. And I think so far, you know, our, I guess the legacy of the band or whatever, you know, kind of shows that we, we have our own niche, you know. And, and we we pay, we've stayed pretty true to that. Yeah. Always, even even when we were out of the band, and Eddie continued on with Kissing Razors uh, until you know the hiatus and whatnot. And uh, I think it was the chemistry was still not the chemistry that's per se as the members wise, but I would say the the way the music structure was to be done. It was always a certain way, and that's the way we've always done things. And I still think it stands true to this day. Uh, even when, like I said, even when, when Eddie was still stayed with the band towards the end. So you guys are working on a new album right now. How's that working? Right now? Uh, not yet. <laughs> it's like, no, it's like um, you know, Matt, Matt's been and Joe have been collaborating, doing some uh, some ideas, and like I said, we've just been rehearsing, you know, getting Gio hooked up and shape. shape. <laughs> no, no, he's doing great. But uh, yeah, we're just kind of just playing all the old stuff again and just getting familiar with that. Uh, really just getting the playing shape again. And then um, we've got some, some ideas. Uh, I think we're going to be doing some pretty cool things. Uh, yeah, we'll just say it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically, uh, I think we're going to do a, a couple covers, play them live, uh, we'll do one of the old songs, play it live. Probably going to have a party at my house, set up some mics, and just do it, everything live. And here's what you're getting. It's like, this is what the band is going to sound like coming mm -hmm. at you. And then kind of an idea of, it's like, hey, you know, 
we can still play. You know, <laughs> we're not that old. You know? <laughs> so, All right, so party at any stage. Yeah, you're more than welcome. It's, it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up soon, actually. Yeah. So what's, what is what is coming up for Pissing Razors? What's the next step? Man, there's so much. Uh, there's all this stuff, and it's all up in the air. And it's like, uh, I think the, the one thing that's solidified, that's solid right now, is the uh, Ride for Don uh, this year in Dallas. Uh, we'll be headlining that, uh, which is awesome. We've got, we got to do it with Cowboys. Uh, and Rob, the guy that puts it together, is just top notch. This year's going to be the Gas Monkey uh, Live. Gas Monkey Live. Killer Club. Yeah. Um, the audio guy there, he's. Mad Max of you know sound and lighting, so it's 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 gonna be really cool. How do you guys compare yourselves to all the other local bands around, like um, like family wise? You know, the local scene is is a, is a family pretty much because we're all in town and we're all in the same goal and everybody's doing you know trying to reach their goal and yeah. it's pretty much the same for everybody. Uh, to me, I, I you know I. I, I see it as this, it's like, uh, I, you know, we've got to do some cool things, travel and, you know, go here and do this and, uh, you know, me, even after the band, I've been doing other stuff and, um, I just see it, I mean, everybody's people, you know what I mean, and we're all musicians, we're all doing the same thing and, and, and you know, and there's no need for any, it's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, better than this guy or whatever, it's like, no, it's like, we're all in the same boat, doing the same thing. And we've all been there struggling, and yeah. some of them are still struggling. Uh, we're, again, at square one, so there's nothing being handed to us. I mean, we're going to have to work for everything that we get. Uh, some things are a little easier than others, but for the most part, yeah, we're, we're starting from the bottom again. Uh, we have a little bit easier. We do have, you know, the ability to record our own stuff. We're not at the mercy of the label. We're, those are the things that were difficult back in the day. Uh, again, that goes back to saying from... Uh, uh, we're a little bit more uh, business savvy as, as opposed to what we were when we were the, the young kids uh, who were just like, here, we're going to give you this, this contract and you're going to get to record and you're going to get to go here and there. And awesome, where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> it, was great, it was great for what it was because That's exactly we, were, what it was. we were those awesome. kids that were, yeah, hey, let's just sign on the line. And, sign and your you life away. Before we knew it, we were gone and we were gone for a long time. And and it was what it was. And some days we were broke, and there was days that we weren't. But we were broke. More days we were broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fooler, so. I was, I was, I was okay. I was. I think you know, in terms of, uh, you know, also on a side aspect of that, you know, in terms of connecting with the local scene and stuff. I think we all can say we have a good relationship mm -hmm. with uh, the, the musicians, Eddie. Continuously has worked uh, sound and stuff. Geo with with his with his projects. You know he gets out into the scene and stuff. So I, I think on a on an all around level, I think we have a good uh, a good vibe and a good feel amongst the scene. You know, well, other musicians. Business 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 but you know we we all have our part. You know we we just like help now on that level. All the place the original play. bands and stuff. You know. And he does the, the he sound. Does sound you know Geo gets out there with his other projects and. and interacts and stuff you do as well so we know a lot of the musicians here and we know the struggles but it's that sometimes the struggle is part of the, of the fun of it you know getting out and experiencing the thing you know ex experiencing the moment I just love sharing a hamburger between there, you <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go that was the best bite of hamburger I ever had <laughs> <laughs> who has the pickle <laughs> Or the meat and sample. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had the pickles and the ketchup and the uh, meatless burger. We had no meat in this hamburger. Pretty much it is It is um, the local scene. Everybody backs up each other. You know, you guys back up everybody else. Everybody else backs up you guys. I mean, you guys practically started the local scene. How do you guys feel about that? being referred to as the godfathers of the local scene here and getting things started and jumped up and inspiring so many other people because I'm sure there are bands out there that admire you guys and how far you guys have gone with everything you guys are doing. I think uh, the most important aspect of that whole scenario is uh, 
and glory integrity. I think that was what we we started the band on. We we chose to maintain you know the integral part of what we wanted to do and, and not really bend to anything and got out there and worked for it. Um, and there was a lot of struggles, but you know. As I mentioned, you know, struggles are, are part of the whole experience, and it's the learning what to do, what not to do. You know, I learned a, a ton of uh, information playing with Eddie. I mean, I have a lot of respect for him, and uh, we got to do a lot of stuff, you know, together through the years. And those are things that money or or things like that you can't buy experience. So getting out and doing it is the most important thing. And, and there's a lot of great bands here that that are doing it. You know. Um, and you gotta respect them when they get out there. They break down on the road like we used to all the time. They run out of gas like we used to. All the, they starve like we used to. But it's part of the experience, and, and you know, it's, it's part of the learning and growing and stuff. So you you can't. You just have to experience it to to uh, to do it. You know? Yeah, you don't want to have things get into you. Exactly. I mean, if you get everything so perfect, then every. Everything is always right. given to you and whatever. You don't get to experience the, the down times, which is also a big step for exactly. for, for people to go through. You know? And those, they're, they're all the, those, you know, I mean, struggles and good times. And just and I, every time it would get hard, we broke, broke down or you're hungry or, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean it was pretty rough. And I, I, I found out from when I was older uh, that my grandfather was a musician in, in Mexico. And it's like, I asked my mother, I like, how come you never told me this? It's like, well, I thought you knew. It's like, no, you never told me this. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she, would, she told me, like, yeah, they, you know, they would go to play a gig. And this is, you know, back in the early 1900s. So <laughs> he goes, yeah, he, he played bass, stand-up bass. So he put a, his bass on a, on a mule, get on a horseback, and they would ride for a couple days mm -hmm. to get to a gig, play the whole weekend, and then ride back for a couple so every time, you know, we're in the van and the AC's not working or what, you know, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this trip would have taken my grandfather three or four days to get there. <laughs> I'll get there in a few hours, you know. They didn't have AC back yeah. then. Yeah. There was probably a lot of tequila back then. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's why they That's what they weren't worried about it, did That's what they were <laughs> I think it's important, you know, to uh, to stick to your guns. I mean, you know, we we through the years and all the business ventures and stuff, you know, labels and things like that. You know, I mean, we we've been asked, hey, well, what about changing the name so we can make it more marketable? Oh, yeah, this constantly. Name. You guys change the name, like you know, we can't do anything with you guys because the name and stuff. <laughs> and it, it's it, it's not so much that that uh, the idea of uh, not not giving in or whatever, but it. It's like you have to maintain the integrity of what you set out for and stuff. It, it, if you believe in it, you know people will come and understand what you're doing, and, and they'll they'll experience the experience with you. you know, and, and to elaborate on that, actually, is but uh, you know when we were when you were doing back of side apps, you know it's like we when we started that band, there was no there was no really no venues to play original music. You had to play covers, mm -hmm. and um, so. You know, I, I had started playing bass, you know, just, just for, for just fun, fun, you know. And uh, I remember one rehearsal, we sat there, we were like 10 tunes in one rehearsal because everybody's so, just like, oh, I got ideas, you know. So next thing you know, we're playing covers and clubs, but we're throwing our original stuff in because we weren't allowed to play original stuff. Mm -hmm. So we throw an original song, oh, this is a new song about Pearl Jam or whatever, you know. And it was one of our songs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we we do that, and it's like by the end of that band, uh, we were still having to conform in certain certain ways to, to play at certain places. Uh, but by the end of that band, we were you know we're just we told the owners of certain clubs like, hey man, we're playing the weekend, we're playing one set, we're playing the same. Right. And they do it because they knew that people you know bring people mm -hmm. out. So when that band was done, it was it was basically. You know, it, it was a, a thought process. It's like the hell of conforming, man. It's like just do something, call the band something completely outrageous, <laughs> make music that will annoy the 
the F out of everybody. Maybe we're saying clubs wasn't enough. Right? <laughs> no, it wasn't enough. Not enough. Not enough. It was the part. So like yeah, go to a urinary tract infection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, that's when we started, started, you know, the band with, uh, with Dave Logan, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was just like straight up, I mean, we played places and see how many people we could run out of there. Yeah. Because the people that would stay, they were like, yeah, you know, and then that, that was the, the beginning of, of what we, you know, what we, Kind of had going on, and we just kind of always oh, stay to that. And yeah. It's like that's what works, and mm -hmm. like, to be honest, be honest with what you want to do. That don't be afraid to try anything. Just go for it. You know. I have to ask, where did you guys came up with the name Pissing Razors? That was with our the, the original singer, who uh, may you rest in peace, rest in peace. Yeah. Dave Loco Pelon, and. Uh, and I forgot how he said it. He goes, hey, dude, I, I had this, this friend of mine, man. He caught the clap, and he told me he felt like he was pissing razors. He goes, I think we should call the band that. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not about what happened to the guy. <laughs> <though. laughs> uh, I mean, at that stage, you know, we were leaning more we were like a punk, hard punk. punk. It was really yeah. hardcore punk band. Yeah. And we had a little tinge of metal and stuff, there, which was a groove. Yeah. It, it, it was weird. The yeah. style was weird, but I mean, it, we were fit, lost. it, fit, it fit the whole <laughs> message because the message was very sporadic and very energetic. And the whole idea was to shock the hell out of the, the crowd. And yeah. Stuff. You know, Dave would go up on stage and he'd blow, like, he'd blow have pie shells full of gunpowder and yeah. light it and blow stuff up. And we <laughs> got the bar from the plane. I don't know yeah. how many freaking places. So the idea was to be as extreme as we could, visually and you know sonically and stuff. But it was leaning more towards the punk being. And then um, you know as he stepped out of the band, then the the metal side of the band came out more. And so it was like at that stage we just said we're just going to keep the name, keep keep pushing on with it. And uh, I remember when we hired Rachel as our manager, she's like, guys, I don't know how I'm going to get you guys. Anywhere, anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I got you anywhere. I, like, I go, Rachel, don't worry about it. Just get us in the door and we'll kick ass. They'll have us back. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> or they might not. <laughs> <laughs> so the name, basically, to answer the name, just, just coincided with the extreme aspect of it. It was like we just wanted to be as extreme as possible at that stage. And, you know, this is 20-something this is years ago. And... Uh, we just stuck with it. We said we're just going to run with it, you know. And, and like I said, we, we had labels and people, you know, business people always like, you know, hey, well, what about changing the name? We yeah, even, even, during, even during like, the time that we were signed, they, the label was still very insistent. They were like, maybe you guys should consider trying to change it. We're like, no, if you don't like it the way it is. Change your image, change it. It's yeah, they wanted us to do image. They wanted us to do the name. It wasn't marketable. It wasn't this. Sounds uh, like they wanted another band. Pretty much. I mean, it, the, yeah. If, if that's what you're looking for, you might as well have gone and found another band. It was we, couldn't, we couldn't have been something we, no. we weren't anyway, I think. You know? So we, we just stuck to what we did, and, and that, that was well, the, the best thing we've see. done, is just sticking to it. You know, so. <laughs> Remember that photo shoot in Germany? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got it. We, they wanted us to take our shirts off. Yeah. And oh, they to put paint on us. They put paint, and they put X's, and they want, oh, they yeah, want to change the image of the band. It was very clear. Just this rated G, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the oddest thing I think we have been. Hey, and that guy was so pissed off because we didn't do any of that. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. This German guy is mad. And then the label was mad at us. Yeah, it was not good. But we're here. <laughs> no, nobody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wore dark colors. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so here's the question of the night to end things. Um, when you guys announced that Pissing Racers was getting back together, it became worldwide news. Everybody was commenting on it. People from from Russia were commenting on how awesome that is. A bunch of kids, a couple of years ago, what, 20 years ago, starting it. Yeah, just a couple. Just a, just a, a few years ago. Just a couple, just a couple a few, ten, twenty. <laughs> ten plus years ago. <laughs> trying to piss off everybody, doing what you guys felt 
sticking to your loyal roots of not changing your names, of not, you know, changing the type of music you guys play and everything. How, how does that make you guys feel? I, I had no words. I was, it was kind of amazing just to be so, you know, thought of after all those years. It's still kind of mind-boggling. It's fun. It's good. I mean, it's, it makes me feel good, you know, for the music for, to last uh, as far as that long. It's, it's pretty awesome. I think for me, I really wasn't sure what to expect in terms of a, of a response from, from any audience, you know, anywhere. I kind of just looked at it as an opportunity for the future versus kind of being nostalgic and going, oh, well, we could do what we did 20 years ago. I really wanted to look at it as an opportunity to say, I really uh, stand behind the music that we've written through the years and thought it would be a great opportunity to carry on that put out another great release, you know, that people really say, oh man, you guys, this one was great back then, but this one is even better. That's my hopes for the future, is, is to say, we topped everything we did in the past for the future. You know, and, and that I would walk away happy on that note, so <laughs> that'd be great for me. Uh, I think for me, I, I've been out around the world and, and the, and the name comes up every now and then, you know, and uh, it's flattering by all means. And it's like to be remembered, and then especially by by your peers, you know. You know, I I, I emailed the friend. I, I don't want to say the band name, but they're they're very successful. They're very well to do and awesome dudes. But uh, I I asked them about uh, uh, seeking a symbol endorsement. So I was, Going to be busy playing drums again, pretty busy. And uh, he sent me a text back. He goes, "Oh yeah, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I can for you, man." You know? And so he was, you know, sent me sent me the soda text, and he goes, "Cause dude, I know, because I believe I told you this before, he goes, but I learned how to play drums because of you." And I'm like, like what? And uh, this is very influential too, man. I'm like going, it just. It, it blows me away. That's like the most flattering <coughs> compliment, you yes. know, uh, on, on, on it's like anything, you know. So getting back to the question, you know, it's, it's, I didn't know what to expect with that sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the response has been like really, it's like, wow, this is pretty, pretty cool. And it's very, very appreciated. Even better uh, than you guys yeah, thought. Yeah, even better than time. Well, yeah. anything. In my case, I mean, that's, I see this stuff coming up, and with myself in the band now, knowing what they did, their struggles back then, you know, and, and people are still accepting it stronger probably now than back then, shows how good of a job they did back then, and it wasn't appreciated as much. And now I, I believe the chance now they're going to be, it's going to be really good, because everybody understands the music more now and, and the whole situation, and it's extra bottom how it just. It's, you know, worldwide, like you're saying. Yeah. And seeing my name on it is like, holy crap. You know? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, and, 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 that's crazy. But, but, you know, and, with total respect to these guys, because they laid the foundation for that, you know, and, and here they are today, still able to play it note for note, and if not better than they were doing back then. You know, it's such an honor to be playing with these guys. As well, with, with you know, and so it's an honor to be 20 bucks for everybody. Over 20, only 20, 20. <laughs> no, but, but, but I'm sure it's not cash. <laughs> but you know, but seriously, it, it's such an honor, you know, like I say, knowing these guys from growing up back in the day and all that, and, and the struggles they went through. We, you know, I had my own struggles, but not as much as these guys right. did, you know, and it's it's so commendable knowing what you're doing to this day back out and sound killers ever. I mean, it, it, the live party at Eddie's house, the video's going to be killer. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be killer. It's going to be the true it's gonna be sound. Real. It's going to be the real deal. Yeah. As long as we don't have to stop in the middle of a song, it's going to be live. Then we'll go to the right thing. We can see you on <laughs> No editing allowed. Yeah, yeah, no, it's going to be yeah, yeah, you know, stable, I yeah. think the, the, everybody's, the world's accepting it already. You know, and, and just in their back of their minds, I can imagine 
how they're feeling about that. Like, Jesus Christ, you know, it's a good thing that they're doing this again. With the little doubt they might have had not to do it, this is, I'm sure, lets them know I'm so glad we're doing this. Yeah, with, with such positive feedback. Yeah, it's, from... it's amazing playing with these guys. It's, yeah. like, it's like I was in the band back then, you know. That's the way I feel when we're going to bring a show up. Definitely moves you and, and motivates you. To, to get that kind of response. Yeah, we do have to, to thank everybody, you, you know, Glenn, everybody that, that got behind the band. I everybody here in El Paso. To us, it was very overwhelming. We were like, we thought, you know, a few people would be, ah, oh, cool, you know, play Dodging Bullets or something. But <laughs> now it's, you know, it's kind of becoming... For it to take it off and, and then it's on its own thing, <laughs> uh, it's nice to be able to have that. Like Eddie said, the appreciation of all the fans, uh, the people here in town, uh, not only the fans here in town, but as far as the musicians in town that have always respected the band. Gio was a fan from, uh, you know, of the band from back in the day, and now he's part of it. To be able to lay his stamp in there mm -hmm. uh, along with us, again, it solidifies the decision that we decided to do. Is uh, is this the right thing to do? Is it the right time to do it? All those things were weighed out, and this isn't something that happened within uh, a couple of months span. I mean, this is probably years that me and Eddie conversated Times that me and Matt have conversated, conversation between Matt and Ed. I mean, it's years. It's years and years that we often yes, and we should, and oftentimes we're like, oh, maybe it's not. You know, we're in a spot where it's, it's. I think it's the right time. And it's good, and it's being accepted and appreciated, and, and we love everybody for for having us back. So it's awesome. That's great. Thanks, guys. Thank this, you. this has been totally awesome. I can't wait yeah. till <coughs> Eddie's party. <laughs> and for the music, just to inform um, you guys, the fans, um, Facebook, Instagram, so we can keep updated with you guys' upcoming projects. There is, uh, we have a few things lined up. Uh, you can uh, follow us through uh, the Facebook, uh, Instagram, we've got Twitter, uh, and whatever else. I think that's it for now. We'll be getting uh, all of our like online stores and stuff up and running and stuff. So you can still find the songs on iTunes and all that stuff. So. I see. So, looking forward to it, guys. Thank you so thank much. You. For Party time! Party time! Party time! Party time! Party time! Party time! Party on that end note, I'm Ina Von G, welcoming back the Pissing Racers. Show. Yeah, come on. <laughs>